Why do I talk about femininity and why do I talk about homemaking? Well, you are going to find out in this video, so stick around and stay tuned. Hello lovely feminine women, welcome back to the channel. Thank you for being here, thank you for your comments, your likes, your following me on my social media handles. It means so much to me and I never want a video to go by where I do not thank you because none of this would be possible without all of you and I truly believe that we are growing together in this femininity revolution. If you are new to the channel, welcome. Join the femininity revolution, which is not just about me, honestly. It's not just about my channel, the people on my channel. It is about all content creators out there who are propelling the femininity message, as well as all those people who engage in this kind of uh, movement that is going on in our culture that I really think is wonderful because it's helping many women reclaim their authentic character traits. If you subscribe to my channel, you can expect that we we will talk a lot about femininity and we will talk a lot about homemaking if you haven't um, caught the drift yet. <laughs> My name is Cynthia. I am a millennial housewife and I'm also a former Miss Earth Canada. If you are interested in my day-to-day -day happenings, you can follow me on all my social media handles linked in the description box. I talk a lot about being a feminine homemaker and I talk a lot about how femininity and homemaking kind of go hand in hand, but I have never done a video explaining why I actually think these two things are so interwoven. Beside the fact that I am a housewife and that is my occupation to take care of my home and the fact that I have had a lot of experiences in my life where I have grown in my femininity, I believe that all women can embrace practices of homemaking that will help them cultivate their femininity. I think it's so much more than just a trend of women who are talking about femininity and homemaking together. Because if you have been a longtime subscriber to my channel, you know that I make a distinction between homemaker and housewife. And housewife and homemaker, those can be used interchangeably, but they don't necessarily need to be mutually exclusive. Any woman can practice homemaking and she can be a homemaker in her own way. My videos on these topics are meant as encouragement regardless of your current life situation. If you have a husband and a home or you are a single gal or you are living in your parents' house, there are so many ways that you can cultivate your femininity by practicing homemaking today. So without further ado, let me get to my first point. Feminine homemaking to me means togetherness. I have already talked about this at length on my channel, how femininity is really people-centric. I find that a lot of people who begin embracing femininity can get too caught up in the superficial and aesthetic parts of it. Those things are beautiful in their own right, but we are really using our femininity to make a better world. We want to bless other people with our soft energy. When it comes to homemaking, I want you to remember the difference between having a servant's heart and being a slave. Slave. Modern culture tells us that both of those things are essentially the same thing, but especially if you are a Christian woman, you know that that is not true. And if you are not a Christian woman, I also want you to adopt the mindset that you understand that servitude is about caring for other people, but it does not mean neglecting yourself. There are so many blessings that come in our lives when we focus outwardly on other people. This does not mean that you always only think about other people and you do not think about your needs at all, this simply means that perhaps you take into account their preferences and the things that they like. I read a wonderful book the other day that talked about how everybody's husband is unique and I think it's a good example when I'm talking about this point in particular. Considering the things that your husband likes and trying to implement them to a greater degree into your homemaking is very people-centric. That is servitude without being slavery. For example, my husband could care less if he ate craft dinner every single night. I am telling you the truth. However, he is more particular in the way in which he's doing his laundry. Does he need me to do his laundry? No, he is a grown adult. But I like to focus on his needs through my homemaking, so I put that extra effort into doing his laundry the way in which he prefers. We are in a mutually respectful marriage here, and I assume that you have a similar situation in your case. And for that reason, when you are 
implementing the things in your home that your spouse or your family likes, you are going to reap the rewards of them truly feeling like they belong in this home. Feminine homemaking is also beautifying. And what I mean by beautifying is not what I was talking about earlier when it comes to simply focusing on aesthetics, but I want you to think about it more from a well-rounded perspective. You want your inner beauty to shine through in whatever you're doing as a feminine woman, and that also applies to your homemaking. How can you really show your personality in your home, through your cooking, through your home decor, through your routines? Me, a type A person, my personality really does shine through in my routines, but I think that having routines can be beautiful in their own way because it causes for us to have a cleaner home, for example. You might be a more artistic spirit, so how can you use your creativity to perhaps include more plants or different colors in your home or a variety of textured fabrics? The possibilities are honestly endless. It's not about having a Pinterest worthy home, a magazine ready home decor style. It is about your personal preferences and how people can walk into your home and really recognize that this is you. Beautifying things is such an integral part of femininity because we are caring for, we are nurturing other things. Which leads me into my third point where I'm going to talk about creativity. I just mentioned creativity, but I wanna put a greater emphasis on this point by emphasizing that we all have have godly given gifts and talents. You might think by comparing yourself to somebody else, which is a common practice in our superficial modern culture, that your gifts and talents are not good enough to create a welcoming home. But I really want you to pause and think about your strong suits and recognize that they do not have to be the most noteworthy gifts and talents in this world. They could include simplistic things. For example, are you a resourceful person? If you are a resourceful person and you know how to make something out of nothing, that is a God-given gift and talent. Many people underestimate how worthy this gift is just because it doesn't give you kind of that worldly recognition if you understand what I'm saying. But this can really bless your family because if you are a resourceful person, you can learn the art of couponing, saving money at the grocery store. You can also learn to actually make clothes or even mend your own fabrics. For me, I really enjoy organizing. However, nobody is going to notice that I organized my bins properly or the utensil drawer is nicely stacked. But those are all ways that I can cultivate my feminine energy through my creativity. It is not solely for the purpose of showing other people what we can do with our homemaking. A lot of it has to do with ourselves. The next thing I want to talk to you about is intent intentionality. Like I mentioned in my princess to queen energy video, the purposeful feminine woman understands where she is going. You do not have to have a concrete plan for your life, but if you are not living in intention, you aren't going to be able to unlock feminine flow because you're going to be burdened by extra stressors. What is your intention for homemaking? Why do you want to cultivate your feminine energy through homemaking? I want you to actually reflect on this. For many of you, it might be because you want to create a Christ-centered home, but for others, it might be because you have a stressful job, for example, and you need a place of actual solace that perhaps has spa vibes. Sometimes we think about the feminine woman like somebody who doesn't accomplish anything. I want you to recognize that this is actually a negative stereotype and the truly feminine woman can have a variety of personalities like I talked about in my feminine archetypes video. But this does not mean that she doesn't walk in purpose and she doesn't fill her days with tasks that she needs to do. Another point that I want you to recognize is that if you want to feel maximum femininity in your homemaking, you're not going to want to 
fill your schedule with mindless busy tasks. You want to be aware of perhaps where you are wasting your energy. Maybe you are on Instagram too often. Maybe you need to reevaluate your meal planning systems or you're running to the store too frequently when that could be dwindled down to once a week. If my husband is watching this, he knows that this is really me here. <laughs> When you structure your day with purposeful tasks, you're going to feel the most confident because you are going to feel the satisfaction of a job well done. Think about opening your Instagram right now. Do you feel a lot of satisfaction scrolling through the pages in comparison to organizing that cover that you have been neglecting? I think we know which one wins. Feminine homemaking also really appeals to the senses. There was something that I noticed when we were shopping for a home homes and that was the ambiance that was created through scent for example when I stepped into somebody's home it gave me more pleasant experience and it caused for me to remember this home and actually consider it on the list of potential homes that we wanted to buy simply due to the fact that it smelled nice I obviously had to rationalize with this afterward and realize that that was not one of the reasons why I should have remembered the home but being a feminine woman means that you are very in touch with your sensuality. Myself, I have been playing around with different textures in pillows, putting them together, as well as blankets, because I do feel as though touch in terms of your blankets and what you are sitting on your sofa is another way to easily infuse sensuality in your homemaking. Maybe you are a music lover. Try to play music while you're doing your chores or when your kids come home from school. You might also have a family that appreciates fresh baked goods. If you find an easy cookie recipe, it's not going to take you a lot of effort to pop that into the oven every other day. This is going to be beneficial for others in your home, but it's also going to appeal to your feminine senses and is going to help you feel more alive. I also want to discuss the concept of creating a more wholesome home. What I mean by wholesomeness, apart from the fact that I want to cultivate my home from a Christian perspective is that I want to enjoy the moment in which I am doing a homemaking task. I want to really maximize even the times that I vacuum my home. I want my home to have a wholesome feel through the actions that I cultivate every single day. The feminine woman is very in tune with the process of doing something. In our modern society, we are so distracted by thinking about the next thing that we are going to accomplish or kind of having our head in the clouds when we are trying to do a certain task. I find that living a slower paced life has been best accomplished through actually trying to focus again. And why I say again is because if you were a modern, uh, turn of the century child like me in the early 2000s, you know that we grew up kind of being pressured into multitasking due to our digital world. We don't know how to focus anymore. This has been a big feat for me to actually only concentrate on one thing at a time. But after you get over that initial activation energy of boredom for the first few weeks, trying to focus on one task at a time, you are going to be better able to do that in a more pleasant way in the future. You're going to actually appreciate what you are doing. It's kind of like a food addiction. After the first two to three weeks, you don't have that craving anymore. And when you slowly try to reintroduce certain healthy foods, for example, you are going to have a greater appreciation for every single taste. Likewise, I do talk about pairing activities for maximum productivity on my channel, but there is beauty in actually trying to focus on one cleaning task, for example, and one cooking task with out listening to something in the background. When you have mastered your focus, you can go back to that habit for productivity. The last thing I want to discuss today is creating an inviting atmosphere in your home. Now, 
This goes back a little bit to my first point about being people centric, but I wanted to completely create its own unique section because being an inviting homemaker deals a lot with hospitality. Hospitality is so difficult for the modern woman because we do not have communities that easily socialize anymore. It can be daunting to actually put yourself out there and invite other people to your home or extend that invitation to having people drop by. But being able to welcome guests on short notice or just generally at all is a very feminine thing to do. It causes for you to be confident in your charm, your conversation skills, your ability to read other people without having for you to feel as though you need to be overly rehearsed and prepared to a great extent. I'm going to end the video there and I encourage you to leave me a comment down below. Let me know how you you believe that femininity and homemaking can be practiced together and I would also love to hear from you if you have been a longtime homemaker or you are very interested in homemaking as a result of femininity any comment that is positive I welcome it with open arms open ears I guess open eyes really because I'm reading it and I would love to sit down and get back to all of you as soon as possible I will see you next time lovely feminine women you are all the best bye bye I feel like that genie show. <laughs>